All right, folks, this will be a six year review of this Tracker Pro Guide. It's a 16 foot deep V. I did a three year review of this boat, and it's the most popular video on my channel. And I watched that review today again, and I think I absolutely nailed it there. I mentioned a lot of small things, and everything was right on the money. I wouldn't change a thing if I had to do the review again today. So I'm not going to repeat any of the stuff that I said in my three-year review. And there is a long list of little things that I mentioned that I didn't like. If you want to see this long list of little things, if you haven't seen that review, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the three-year review. This six-year review will be only for things that happened since you know from three years to six years and a few a few other opinions that I gained right now so let's start now right under these two plastic holes here there is another fitting that is now stainless steel but it used to be plastic and this fitting is kind of originally sticking out of the hull a little bit too much I don't know if you can tell but I don't know they should have tried to make it not stick out so much because this thing is sometimes grabbing on the bunk boards over there and this one one time I was in Wisconsin the ramp was really shallow and that plastic fitting I felt it get snagged on the bunk board over there, on the beginning of the bunk board and get snagged and I inspected the boat because I felt it. It didn't look too bad but it moved a little bit and on the next fishing trip the boat started to take water from here. A little bit but you know it started leaking, water was going in from here. So that's what happened. They could have made a better design, they could have made it you know aluminum or at least not stick out so much this one doesn't stick out so much but Bass Pro Shops charged me $50 for the stainless steel fitting and I think 150 for labor don't quote me on that but uh, I, I thought it was very reasonable I was in and out very fast and that was the only case in six years I have seen water come out of the hull of this boat. The hull has been rock solid and trust you me I have banged this hull around. I'm a very careful person. I, I never had an accident of any kind. I never hit anything big uh, in the water. However when you fish for crappie you're gonna bang it around some stumps and, but the biggest accident is always on the ramp when I get caught in a storm. I mean, I don't know why I keep fishing until the last minute. Don't do that. But, you know, in a little lake, you think nothing can happen, but you get caught in a serious storm and you're trying to tie the, do the boat to a dock and it, the wind keeps banging you against the dock and you try to... That's, that's when all of the damage happens. I did put here a new, this is a silicone edge that they put on the furniture to protect your kids, you know, from cracking their skull open. I did glue uh, on either side of the boat a piece of silicone edge because I kept banging the edges here so much that not only I lost all paint, but I started to worry that I'm going to compromise the welds, forget about the paint. So I put some corners here too. Uh, but regardless of that, I am really happy because on Lake Michigan too, those of you who fish Lake Michigan in the winter, you know what nasty ramps we have. I've banked this boat, I think, pretty good and still Never, never water other than, other than this minor accident over there, which I don't hold it against Tracker, to be honest with you. I understand in this price range, you're going to put plastic fittings like this. I went from a trip 
prop, uh, three blade prop to four blade prop and back to three blade now. To be honest with you, I like the four blade better. The four blade you lose, I don't know, two, three miles per hour top speed, but maneuvering around the ramps is so much better. It's just, you're not gonna believe it until you put a four blade prop. It's just much better ar around the ramp, just loading and loading. And I don't care for top speed much anyway. I don't travel uh, long distances. But when time came to replace it, the three blade was on clearance for $65. This is original Mercury a prop that I found for 65 bucks, while the four blade was 180. So I got back the three blade. I, I gained my top speed, but I lost my control. But whatever, it was cheaper. I have still six years later, never had any kind of problem whatsoever with the engine. Starts very easy. I have not changed even the spark plugs yet. I haven't done that. I just change every year the oil and the, you know, the filters and the lower unit oil too. I did change on the fifth year the lower unit and it was still in warranty. They changed it for me. I don't know if I can hold this, definitely cannot hold it against tracker. I don't know if I can hold it against Mercury either because like again, I never had an accident. I never hit a rock or something like this, but you know, you go in the river, you're going to hit some garbage, you know, stumps, trees. So I hit minor stuff all the time, uh, but never anything big. Anyway, I'm not worried. I'm not holding this against tracker or mercury that on the fifth year I had to replace the lower unit it was still working fine i was just getting water mixed in um, with the oil i installed a 12 foot talon on the boat yes it is on the driver's side it is on my side everybody told me to install it on the other side to balance but when i give gas always my side is higher it was so bad that if i have another passenger even if i put all the coolers on my side the boat is still like this so actually now believe it or not uh, now on full throttle with the talent behind me the boat is perfectly straight and now i can have people on the other side and the boat is actually better balanced with this now i can feel the extra weight the thing weighs about 50 pounds with all the brackets and installation hardware I can feel the weight behind me, but I mean, I can still go 30 miles per hour when I'm completely empty. I don't think it affected too much the top speed. I, I don't know. It's, it's really not a big deal. I'm more worried about the 50 pounds hitting my transom on every pothole, which is why I'm transporting the talent in horizontal position. And that is, I found out the hard way, against Minkota's uh, insurance policy. So if you, if you transport your talent in a horizontal position, you waive your insurance. You're not al allowed to transport it horizontally. And I'm going to make a separate video about the installation of the talent. But it's not as bad. Uh, performance of the engine is not as bad. It's kind of out of the way when I'm... Even when I'm going long distances uh, on water, I just, you know, flip the, ba the bracket, I put it horizontal and I lay it down before I get up on plane. I don't, I don't drive on plane with the talon up because on these waves, I don't want this thing hitting uh, my transom. My transom, I don't know if the whole thing is hollow, but over here when I was drilling the holes on top, it is actually hollow, hollow. There is no board inside. So nothing to rot, but I just don't know how this transom can hold 50 pounds vertical, just bumping it down on every pothole or on every wave. So just for me to feel better, during transportation, I lay it forward, and when I'm up on plane, I, it's, it's forward also. But 
it's it's made crappy fishing and carp fishing also a lot easier so no regrets but definitely you cannot put two on this boat that is against trackers uh, it'll be illegal because the transom can only support I think 80 or 90 pounds more so don't tell me that the the boat can can take it it's it's not safe I don't think it's safe and it will definitely be illegal because you would be going above manufacturer allowed specifications these wheels are the best looking component of the entire boat trailer rig I, I haven't washed them now but if I shine them they're absolutely shiny they still don't have a single stain on them I don't know if that's a real chrome or how they put them but also the tires are pretty good size I have about uh, 60,000 miles on the trailer now maybe 65 and these are original tires and I still have I mean I still have good tread on these tires I'm not planning on replacing them anytime soon I haven't had any issues with the trailer also at all once I put my own bunk boards over there um, I made them from high quality, you know, wood. I put polyurethane on the wood. I let it dry before I put them. Then I put two layers of carpet to make it softer. I haven't had any more issues with them. Um, you know, in, when I was doing the three-year review, I said this thing has a lot of free play. I still haven't fixed it. It works just fine. This one, I said I have to fix it because it's all worn out. That was three years ago. I still haven't fixed it. It's still worn out, but it still works just fine. The trailer is... I don't see anything, but... See, you, this, you're starting to see rust at some... This is the sixth year at some welds, probably. What I'm going to do personally is use this three four more years and on the tenth year I'm just gonna buy an aluminum trailer you don't have to I don't see nothing wrong with the trailer I have been replacing entirely the grease out of the bearings every year and I'm sure it's fine but just for peace of mind I can afford it on the tenth year I'll just get a brand new uh, aluminum trailer for the boat this thing here I put this new jack this was the most ex expensive jack sold jacks are kind of important for me because I have to by hand roll the boat back and forth this this thing absolutely sucks this is a piece of something for this price to be that flimsy it's it's an absolute disgrace and when you're pulling it by hand first of all look, look how flimsy it is and second of all this thing you, you try to push the boat to the left it will drag the plastic wheel to the left it doesn't want to turn inside here it doesn't want to turn and the wheel go in the direction that you want to push the old I had two $40 jacks before this one one on the right and one on the left people kept using me why you have asking me why you need two jacks because it's so easy to push with two jacks the boat left and right by hand it was so easy to maneuver here on the driveway push it back turn it left right with two jacks but the two jacks were steel and they were heavy and i'm having problems with too much tongue weight on my subaru so i replaced the two steel jacks with one aluminum jack and um, I saved a lot of weight I felt it right away however this thing does not compare one time it actually popped out of here and the whole boat fell on the ground I don't know if I didn't if it didn't click all the way in I don't know if it, it, if it was my fault but if you see this Fulton 1600 pound and that was the most expensive one at eTrailer.com it had good reviews but it's a total piece of something my 100 dollar bimini top from ebay is still here everybody told me don't buy from ebay they're flimsy 
they break right away. Well, this guy has been going strong for six years. I, I don't see, look, no rust, no nothing. How is that even possible? I mean, it's, it's amazing. This thing hasn't budged. Uh, I have a video on how to install it without drilling holes, any holes at all in your boat. Uh, this is hard to see, but you can kind of figure it out. But I do have a video on how to do this installation of Bimini Top. I'm going to leave that video in the description uh, below. The only thing that I did since uh, the video you saw on the third year is I put a two and a half inch block here to raise it two and a half inches higher because the height of the Bimini Top was just touching my hair when I'm walking back and forth uh, on the boat and I was having to kind of bend my neck forward just a little bit but when you're walking all day with your neck bent forward at the end of the day you kind of feel your back is hurting so these two inches just did phenomenal job for me it's 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 hard to believe but just two inches up i'm not touching anything when i'm walking inside now and um, yeah super comfortable even the cloth still looks good i mean the the zipper is not torn 95 bucks I paid for this thing, still here. I have the Garmin Force trolling motor now. I have a review of the trolling motor also. I will leave a link to that review in the description as well. This thing is strong like a horse. I feel I can tow other boats just with a trolling motor. I feel I can almost get up on plane with a trolling motor alone. That's how strong this thing is. That's because it was designed for, you know, much bigger boats than mine. I uh, did manage to squeeze in two 80 amp hour lithium batteries here. But if you see how they are, they're both on an angle. That's the only way to, to squeeze two group 27 batteries here. They both have to be on an angle and then they fit. Then they fit fine. And then I have some... Um, uh, again insulation here to prevent the batteries from wiggling actually they are sitting so tight here that they're not they're not budging at all now I've been using these batteries for a year and a half now because of these batteries and this ridiculous trolling motor I mean I have almost completely stopped paying for gas uh, for the engine I put gas like once or twice per season my lakes are very small um, some of them have restrictions for gas engines anyway and I go from one lake, one end of the lake to the other just with the trolling motor when I put this thing on 10 or 12 out of 20 I'm already doing 3 miles per hour I, I don't, I don't want to turn on the gas engine to go faster because I use the time to scan with side imaging while I'm going somewhere, I'm in no hurry but I use the gas engine right now just to load and unload the boat. That's pretty much it. Uh, I had a season, I think I put gas only twice. That's why uh, for six years I have 200 hours on the gas engine only. Uh, that's it. I have live scope, as you can see. It does get in the way if you are doing carp fishing or cat fishing or something else where you don't really use it so usually when i do catfish i have it here anyway even though the screen is not even turned on uh, but i still put it here just to keep my platform here clean but you know live scope does make a difference so um, the carpet is still i mean it looks old but it's not bad you know I do not feel like I need to recarpet my boat. I don't have any any bad stain. I, I don't have any stains. I think my dad once burned with a cigar the carpet over there. That's the only kind of spot I have uh, on the whole boat. Everything else from the first review I did, you know, the panels uh, misalign a little bit, but. I mean, this is this kind of stuff is normal for for a cheap boat. I mean, I haven't had anything else break on me. All of the all of the gauges here, as I said in 
three years ago, everything still works. Everything still works. Nothing has, nothing has failed. I have these trays there. I'm kind of pretty big on storage. I like to put my keys and phone out of the way and put scissors and when I'm cutting and whatever, changing jigs all the time, put these trays. I put this uh, rod rack here. I made it myself just to have the right space between the rods and the right diameter here. I wanted to buy, I didn't do this myself to save money. I wanted to buy a nice fancy one with the chrome, but the chrome ones, they, were, they had like enormous pipes for, I don't know what you're gonna put. I'm putting ultralight rods here. I didn't need these big pipes. And also the space was not enough. So anyway, I made them myself and uh, I cannot uh, fish without them. It doesn't matter carp or crappie or what I'm doing. They're always loaded with rods and make everything kind of out of the way and uh, pretty comfy. So I'm gonna end the video here, but if I miss something or if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below and I do reply uh, to all comments. I personally, six years later, have absolutely zero regrets for buying this uh, boat. And I have a lot of regrets in my life about buying my cars. Why did I buy Nissan Maxima instead of a truck? I have a lot of regrets, but I have zero regrets about this boat. It's, you can do all kinds of fishing with it. Yeah, it's cheap, you know, the panels are not all aligned and uh, it's flexing a little bit, you know, in some places because, because they didn't use thick enough, you know, materials and whatever. All of the stuff I said in the third review, uh, three year review is, is true. But this boat does not compete on the market with quality, you know, you're gonna say, or, or any other special components. This boat competes with value. So you have to understand that. Not compare, you know, to Lund, to Lund in, in terms of, you know, materials and gauges and, and stuff like that, but compare with price and it's still working fine. It doesn't sink the hull. Probably the strongest feature of this boat, it, it doesn't uh, take in water and it will take a reasonable, you know, banging around the, the docks and not let you down. And what else do you need? You can put some money for, you know, trolling motor, batteries, electronics, even talon, and you can do any kind of bottom fishing or crappy fishing. For crappy fishing, it's not the best because it has too much air drag. For crappy fishing, if that's the only thing you do, you might look at a different model because too much air drag and the trolling motor keeps adjusting because the wind is blowing you and the trolling motor keeps doing micro adjustments all the time so you never sit still. So I always have either the talon down or one anchor dropped just so I, I, I'm not moving all the time. But you know I make it work and I'm very happy and I go to these shady neighborhoods sometimes and I'm not afraid something will happen to my boat or if I scratch it somewhere, I'm not afraid of that. So I strongly actually recommend this boat with all of its, you know, little flaws for first time boat, for beginner boaters that you have no experience with boating and you know you're going to have some minor accidents. I recommend it for you. And also for everybody on a budget, if you're on a budget, but handy, you can make things work. You can, you can fix little panels yourself. You can install trolling motors, electronics. So for everybody on budget or just beginner boaters, I, I recommend it six years with this thing. I haven't seen any issues. And even if I come into money, I don't plan on, on getting another boat. I, I can do everything I want with this boat. I, uh, it's enough for one people or two people, plenty of room for two people. You add a third person and you start getting into each other's way. But for two people, it's, it's an amazing fishing machine. You, you get everything you need uh, over here. So, okay, thanks for watching and uh, 
I will answer all questions left in the comment section below. Bye-bye.